Mm, get a tragic here. Now, before I start this video, I just want to say something very strange happened with the recording. Basically, everything was slowed down a huge amount. It was like going, Whoa. well, not quite that bad. I'll insert a bit of the other audio just so you can hear it. So if you can keep a mob around just to constantly, every turn, discard a shadow card. Yeah, pretty bizarre. So I sped it up just to make it sound better. But maybe there's now syncing problems. I don't know. I'm just going to upload it. Hopefully it'll, it'll all work out. So just a warning. This isn't the best quality video. Hmm. <laughs> G'day. Tragic here. And welcome back to Lord of the Rings. We're going to be doing the Hunt for Gollum. Now this is the first quest outside the core set. And I'm probably going to take a little bit of a break from doing videos for a while. As well as the development of this mod because I've got a big work project coming up, which I need to focus on. But I will be back soon. But I thought I'd try and get a couple out of the way. I might do Conflict out of the crack because it's just such an easy quest. And I wouldn't mind doing another version of Escape from Gold Door because it's very, I, I really enjoy playing it. And it's just not, I, don't, I didn't play it very much in the old days because it's extremely hard solo. And it'll be interesting to see how my deck functions if a different hero is taken. So there might be three more videos, and then there'll be a big break. Okay, let's check out what we got here. This is an alright opening hand. We have the tracker, which is important. We've got the health bucket, though, which is really important. So it's not a bad hand, actually. Over here... We don't have any heals, so we're going to mulligan and try and get a healer. Your blammo, and we don't get a healer, and we get nothing but utility cards. So that is a horrendously bad hand. So we've got basically four cards that do nothing except for emergencies. Well, that was very bad. We're not going to mulligan this one, though. Okay, so let's get into this. Gandalf has requested your assistance in the search for the elusive creature known as Gollum. Your search begins in the Anduin Valley between Mirkwood Forest and the Misty Mountains. Reveal one card per player. Yablamo and Yablambo. Okay, Ears of Workwood is out. This has an effect that just says, while it's the active location, you can't do counters, which is a big deal later on in the game, but it doesn't really matter for the early game. Okay. You make your way along the banks of the Anduin River, a likely place for Gollum to find food. It's only eight to pass, but it has an interesting forced effect. After the player's quest successfully, the first player looks at the top three cards of the encounter deck, reveal and add one of those cards to the staging area, discard the other two cards. What that is basically saying is, scry three, keep one from the encounter deck. And it's got a kind of slightly overly complicated timing thing going on because it occurs during the calculation phase of do you quest successfully or not that happens before you place tokens. And you'll see that in action sometime during this playthrough, I'm sure. Okay, we're ready to start. This guy is the first player. Let's draw our next set of cards. And also we are using Bilbo, the boss creature, to draw a another card. Bilbo is a real <coughs> be pun. Bilbo is a super underrated character in my opinion. Okay, so our priority is to get Citadel Plate out. And that's going to require four tokens. So we don't want to spend any of these tokens, even though we have a nice juicy vassal that we can put out. And I think I'm just gonna go one. Uh, let me just quickly check over here, see what we drew. Oh, we drew a song. That's actually pretty good. So that's turn two. Turn two, we can play this. Plus we can get... Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually not going to spend anything. I'd like to put out my Westworld, West Road Traveler, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to quest with these and... I'm not going to do anything here either. So I'm just going to quest like that. That's going to give us a nice juicy 
plus six. I think I don't even need to quest with Gimli. So let's go Yablamo. Okay, the first one we release is the Crows, which remember we do have Thalen, so it's automatically killed because he does one damage as they're revealed. And that also <clears throat> and that also cancels the Surge. So every time he comes out, we just shuffle him back in. Second card, Eastern Bank, and we're still positive one. So that was a good quest. We don't want to quest too fast. Bammo. Now, that... Technically, that progress token is in place, but we have calculated successfully. So we draw three cards and we choose one to keep and we put the other one into the discard pile. And we're going to pick, and we haven't really got our heels yet, so I don't... Um, yeah, I think I'm actually going to take one additional matching resource to play event cards and attachments. One additional to play allies. So all of them kind of suck. I really want to take the hunter, but we don't have any heals yet. So unfortunately I can't. So I'm going to discard this one and I'm going to discard the play ally one. Now you'll note that I'm now negative two because there's 10 threat in the staging area, but we've already calculated that we were positive one. So we still get to place that progress token. And then I'm going to travel to the uh, Eaves of Mirkwood. Okay, so let's draw cards and draw another card. Ah, and there we get two healers. Excellent. That was a real shame that we didn't actually keep the mortal guard. Oh, and we get a second health bucket. It's pretty amazing. So I'm going to go one, two, three, and place out my tutor this allows us to grab a song i'm going to come in here and i'm going to take a song of wisdom nice and let's go one and place out the song of wisdom and then let's go one two and place out Glow Wine. Glow Line allows you to exhaust to draw a card. So we're just going to exhaust him straight away. There's very little damage coming out of the encounter deck and treacheries in this quest. So you can tap during the planning phase. Okay, and that's that. And I'll quest with both of these dudes. Meanwhile, over here, let's go one, two, place out this guy. This is the Westworld Horse Traveler. After you play the Traveler, switch the active location to any other location. So we're gonna come over here and we're actually gonna move the additional, where is it? Move the West Bank. This one, uh, event cards and attachments cost an additional. So we're gonna swap that out. It's gonna remove one threat from the uh, staging area. And quest, quest, quest. That gives us plus three. It's not a huge amount. I'm going to tap you as well. That gives us plus five. What I might do is leave this untapped and then tap you. And that'll give us plus five questing. So let's go one, two. Okay, we're negative one. So we're going to discard one card from our hand. I'm going to discard the Vassal of the Windlord. And that gives us plus one. And that was a terrible plan. I really should have quested with this dude. I didn't want to quest with him because I thought we'd make the quest and then I could use this card here. So that was a pretty bad play by me. But anyway, we're now zero. There's three states a quest can be in. It can be quest successfully, quest unsuccessfully, or even. And there are three different triggers. This one here triggers off questing successfully. But because we're even, nothing gets added. So that's kind of bad for us. And additional costs for events, which really sucks. So that was a huge misplay by me. 
But luckily, we are mainly going to be casting. Did I draw a card? I, why isn't it drawing cards when I do this? Something wrong with my keyboard. There we are, draw a card. I think I need to change the battery on my keyboard. Okay, we're almost ready to cast our plate. So let's go one, two, three, four. We're going to put out our tracker. And this time I'm definitely going to quest like so. Meanwhile, over here, let's tap you. Draw a card on this side, I think. And I'm going to go one, two, three. Remembering this guy has now got the wisdom icon. And I'm going to put out, I guess I can hold off the healing. So I'm going to put out a Mirkwood Runner. And I'm actually going to double quest just to, I haven't been using Denethor's ability, which is pretty stupid of me. I'm playing like a pudding. Bam. So we're actually at 13. So we're still at zero as, oh wait, I didn't quest with this guy. Let's quest with this guy as well. That gives us another three. Okay, so we're doing very badly here. Right, so that is one, two, three, four, five from the tracker. Now the tracker being one of the most powerful cards basically says every time you commit, you place one progress token on every location in the staging area. This card is bonkers. Okay, so let's go bam. Doomed One and Surge remove all progress tokens from Riverland. So we get uh, that. And this is a marshland. This is a marshland. That is a forest. That is a Riverland. And this one is a forest. So we only lose one token. That was pretty lucky. And for our second card... Oh, it's a crow. What luck. So this one gets shuffled back in. And we know for a fact that the Westworld bank is three and we're plus two. So we're going to use Eowyn's ability again. And I think I'm going to discard this card here. Bam. That's going to give us one extra token. We're now plus three. One, two, three. Okay, so we've quested successfully. Technically, we haven't placed the tokens, and then we draw three cards for the scry, and we pick one of these to keep. Okay, and we're gonna keep the crow. Now, this is an interesting little quirk that a lot of people fail to remember. If we actually look at the quest phases, 3.5, the end phase. Characters are no longer considered committed to the quest. That is at the very end of the quest phase. So, during this whole step, the quest phase is still running. We have not entered the travel phase, which means his effect is still live because it's while he's committed to the quest. That means during the scry period, he's still placing wounds, which means this guy gets discarded and shuffled back in. Very nice. Okay, and we also clear this location. And... Allies cost an additional point, so let's go to here for our travel. Okay, your blammo and your blammo. Draw another card. Ah, great, we get our song. So I'm going to go one and play out a song, and I'm going to stick it on here. Actually, I'm not going to do that. We'll do that next turn. Instead, I'm going to go one, two, three, and place out our attachment. Now, the reason I'm not playing this one is because, remember, we're plus one additional resource for casting allies because the East Bank is up. Okay, so what have we got over here? We've got two... We've got two... Uh, What's it called? Threat reduction. So what I really need to do is tap over here and try and dig out my steward of Gondor. We're tapping this guy for drawing cards. 
Okay, so that's pretty much his turn. Let's go, you blam, you blam, you... Uh, I forgot to scry again with Denethor, because I'm useless. And over this side, we're going to go one, two, three, four, and place out our first health bucket. So, for those of you that know, what we're building here is what uh, players call a Gloin engine. Now, a Gloin engine is basically... A nearly broken <laughs> uh, system that you can get running in this game for resources. So it's a resource engine, but people call it the Gloin engine. So what happens is this adds plus four hit points, and he starts with four, so he's now got eight hit points. And here's this ability that says, after Gloin suffers damage, add one resource to his resource pool for each point of damage he just suffered. Now, the reason it's worded like that is because suffering damage and the points of damage are actually different triggers in for various effects. But it basically is saying, for every point of damage he gets, he gets a resource. So now that he's got eight health, he can take seven damage a turn and be completely fine. So this deck has a number of heals. We've already got two heals, so we can heal four damage a turn. So he can earn five resources a turn already, and we haven't even got the Gloin engine properly running. So he is kind of broken, especially in the late game. In the next set, there's a card called Warden of Healing, which is a heal card, kind of like this bloke here, except you can untap it by spending resources. And what that basically means is he could get hit for like 10 damage, then he could heal all the damage and still have plus resources. It's pretty crazy. Plus he heals everyone else. It's a very, very strong combo. And I don't, I don't know if it's been eroded or whatever, but uh, anyway, you're gonna see the glowing action in effect because we've actually got both our heal buckets. We've got our other health bucket already. These are restricted, so you can only have two on him at once. Anyway, whatever. The point is uh, our uh, coin engine is already up and running, so now we just need the resource engine on this side. Okay, there's nothing we can cast here because, remember, allies... We've got this guy who costs two, but allies cost an additional point, so we'll just do that. Remember, we have the Northern Tracker. So that is one, two, three... Four. This guy costs two to clear, so he's gone. Three, two to clear for this one as well, so he's gone. And this one is three to clear, this one is three to clear. So what are we questing for? We're questing for positive nine, that is way too much. So let's untap you and untap you. Yeah, questing for five is much better. So, draw. Yes. Draw. Ooh. This is a nasty guy. Basically, all we have to do now is discard a card from each of our decks. Two points. And this one. Don't be a threer. Oh, no. We lose the Steward of Gondor. That's like the worst. If only I didn't use this. Oh well, too late. So basically, Steward of Gondor is two, and Favor of the Lady is two, which means that this guy is actually plus four will. Discard the top card of each player deck until the end of the phase, increase the scavenger's will by the total printed cost, or threat, I should say. So there's one, two, three, four. And we have no spare resources to cast our Radagast Cunning. This card is in the deck for that character. Basically, you can just click on something and say, no, no will. But you need to have a resource, and we spent all our resources. So that was pretty bad. So we're negative two, but we can do a discard to get this functioning. So I'm going to discard one, and I'm going to discard two. And that gives us two extra will. And we're now questing even. So the way that works is this is actually new to me because I'm pretty new to playing multiple hands. But this effect may be triggered by each player. So Eowyn's 
ability can be triggered by once per round by every player. So in a four-player game, she's actually kind of got eight will. I mean, she is powerful. I mean, I didn't realize how powerful. I mean, she was always powerful, but like being able to have six will a turn, very strong. Okay, so we're still at zero. So we don't actually get to do anything. But what we're going to do is we're going to optionally engage this guy. And then because we're the first player, we also get this guy to come over. Okay, so let's draw our shadow cards. Remember, you deal shadow cards to the higher threat first. This guy's 34. We're going to leave this undefended. Flip. Discard from play all allies with printed costs lower than the number of Riverlands in play. That's a very nasty card, but we only have one Riverland in play. No one costs zero, so that does nothing. We get two wounds, which gives us two resources, and then we just tap this guy to heal two points of damage. So he's back at zero, and we'll leave this undefended. Nothing, and that gives us another point of damage and another resource. Excellent. Now remember, these guys all had one wound when they came on because of Thalen. And I'm just going to tap my Workwood Runner. He only attacks for two, but he has an ability that says, you know, ignore their defense. So he's three health. We put two dead. Well, he doesn't have any defense. Whatever, he's dead. Oop, missed. Okay. Blamo and Blamo, and we're basically able to get a free, a free, uh, two free resources a turn now. Okay, so I'm going to go one, two, three, four, place out another one. There is no, oh wait, this guy. Ally still costs one more to play, so we can't do that, actually. One, two, three, four. So instead, I'm going to go one, two, three, and do a greeting. One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, no. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're dropping this guy to 24 threat. Quest, 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 quest. Man, I really need to get my quest on. Okay, we've got so many resources over here now. We're going to spend one, place out this bloke over here. Then I'm going to go one, two, three, put out another healer. You'll note that I'm using these attachments. I really like these attachments because they don't, in this quest at least, because they don't count to your, uh, you know, whatever it's called. I know what I'm trying to say. They don't count to something. They don't count to my ally count. You saw that there's been some cards already that count your allies. And we're still looking for steward. So let's tap again. Nice. I'll spend one more resource. Play up Campfire Tales. That allows everyone to draw a card. Aha! And there is the steward. Excellent. And I think I've been forgetting to draw the extra card because of Bilbo the whole time. Whatever. Let's keep going. We are plus four. Let's tap you and go plus six. We get one progress here. These both have two. They both clear on three and they're both Gladian Fields. So Bamo, and these are actually also got victory points, so they actually go into the victory display. And we're now plus 12. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So massively over-quested here. Whatever, doesn't matter, let's keep going. Your Blamo. Your blamo. Okay, so this one says X is the number of ally cards in play. We have one, two, three, four, five ally cards in play. So that's one, two, three, four, five. 
And this one says, discard one resource from each resource pool. Exhaust any hero that cannot do it. So exhaust, exhaust, minus one, minus one, minus one. And we're plus seven. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, gee, there's an error in the mod. So I'm still in the process of getting my mod functioning. So there's a couple of errors. Look at this one. Anyway, the, the point is this is completed and we place a bunch of progress tokens. This is discarded and we will travel to the old Ford to get that threat out of the staging area. Okay, we'll leave this guy undefended again. He does two damage. So that's one, two, and we also tap that one to heal the last remaining wound. And then I'm actually gonna tap Mirkwood Runner just to put two damage on top of this guy. I don't wanna kill him, I wanna farm him for money, but I do wanna get him in the position where we can kill him in a one shot, because this guy's doing two damage a turn because he ignores their armor. So this guy's got an armor of two, we just ignore it. So he's got three wounds. We'll get him to five wounds, which means we can just kill him with a three-point attack. And uh, that's it. Let's draw. Draw a card. And also remember to draw a card because of Bilbo. That's why we took so long to dig this out, because I was forgetting to draw Bilbo's card. And we're going to go one, two, place out. Oops. Place out our steward. And we're going to go one, two, three, place out another heal. So our Gloin engine is basically running at full tilt now. We can gain six resources without taking a point of damage, which is pretty crazy. So it's time to start looking at this deck. So let's draw an extra card using Gloin. And once again, let's go quest like that. We probably only need to quest with one. Meanwhile, over here, let's tap you and go one, two. We're gonna go one, two, three, and do another greeting. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nice. Okay, someone's doing a bit of gardening in the other house block. I'm just gonna get up and close the window. Okay, where am I? And that'll do us. Uh, yeah. So quest, 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 quest. Uh, did I do a scry last turn? I don't think I did. We'll just quickly do the scry now. One, two, three. We'll just choose the bank to the Anduin to keep. I don't think we did a scry last turn. Sorry about that. Okay. So we're questing for a billion. We draw two cards. This one only hits people 35 or higher. We're both in the mid twenties. So that whiffs and we're plus 10 now. So two that is cleared and we get another eight progress tokens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 13, we have now beaten this location. The wood was full of the rumor of him, dreadful tales even among beasts and birds. The woodsman said there was some new terror abroad, a ghost that drank blood. Okay, so there's a kind of annoying thing going on here is that we haven't found any of our clues yet. Basically in this quest, we wanna dig out an objective and we haven't gotten any, and we haven't even sent any to the discard pile. So they're all still in the deck. They've got to be coming soon. Rumors have led you to the eaves of Mirkwood Forest, where the woodsmen whisper of a new terror in the night. Now this has a similar scrying thing, but it happens at the beginning of the turn instead of the end, which means that you have to actually deal with the threats. Uh, let's put back to the Anduin down. And then down here again, we... Leave it undefended, flip. 
If you do not control at least one hero with a clue card attack, double this enemy's attack. Double this enemy's base attack, which is very important. So this guy is two, so he's actually attacking for four. Two, four. One, two, three, four. Let's tap you and put another two wounds on him. And your blemo. And your blemo. Draw a card. We draw a second card just for fun. Let's tap you. One, two. Okay, so we're going to go one, two, three, four. And place out another tracker. And we're going to go one and place out an Ancient Mathen here. And that'll do us. Blam, 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 blam. Meanwhile, over this side of the world, we have our parting gifts. Excellent. Let's spend one and place out another song over here, just so we've got a little bit more uh, tactics resources when we require them. Let's go one, two, three, place out another attacker. And one, two, three, we'll place out another healer. And then I think I'll just tap you and draw another card over this side. Okay, that's giving us a questing power of plus 10, which is quite a lot. So we scry the encounter deck, we draw two cards, and we keep one. This one whiffs, deal one damage to each character 35 or higher, so whatever, we'll choose to keep that one, but it whiffs, so it just disappears. And now we draw two cards. Where are the clues? Okay, when revealed, each player raises threat by one for each character he controls that is not currently committed to the quest. This would be one, two, three, four, four, Five, six, seven, eight. So we are definitely going to cancel that. We just drew a cancel. So let's spend one and cancel that. So this also whiffs. Okay, so we're plus eight. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three of it, one, two, three, goes here. This is discarded. This is a Banks of the Anduin, so it actually goes on top of the deck. This is also discarded, which gives us a draw of three. One, two, three. Because these say, first player draws three cards. So we just drew a whole shitload of cards. And we place five progress tokens. Travel to the Anduin, and we'll get this guy to attack. Remember, he does not... Oh, he does have a wound on him, doesn't he? Uh, I've got to be more careful with my wounds, because basically the scry at the beginning is before characters commit to the quest, so Thalen is no longer putting damage out during the, the scry. I can't remember where this guy has damage on him. It doesn't matter. We're not going to put any damage on him, so... He gets a card, he gets a card. Leave this one undefended. Flip. <coughs> Nothing. That's two damage. One, two. This one's undefended. Flip. Deal one damage to each hero with a clue card. No one has a clue card. So bam, that's another two damage. One, two. Then I'm just gonna go fort attack and kill this guy. This is your blammo and your blammo. Let's uh, get that away from there. And he draws another card because of Bilbo, which I seem to be forgetting to do for some reason. Okay, let's go. What have we got over here? Yeah, nothing I really care about. So let's go... One, two, and we'll play out the Saliva and Stone. This is going to give him some extra questing power. And let's go one, two, three, put out another Archer, just in case we need it, which we won't, but whatever. 
And we may as well quest, I guess. Well, we've got to slow down our questing. We'll tap you and draw another card over this side. And we're basically ready to go. I don't like not having a cancel. So I'm going to spend one card here to use Tome to take the cancel back into my hand. Let's tap you, go one, two. We'll go one, two, three, four. Put out the other health bucket. It's another one, two, three, four. He now has 12 health and he can heal two, four, six, eight at a turn. So, he's, you know, the, <laughs> the engine is a running baby. And, well, that's about that. So, quest, 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 quest. We're questing for 13. There's nothing in the staging area. We first do the scry. Ah, and we finally get a card. So, this is actually unusual. So, what happens is... When an objective comes out, it's guarded, so it gets another card added to it. But remember, this is actually a scry. We're actually scrying the encounter deck and choosing to keep one by this forced effect. So reveal and add one of those cards. So we actually get to discard this annoying false lead. And now that we've done the scry, we then draw the guarded card. So this gets added like that. That's a bank of the Anduin. Very cool. Now, we now have a clue in play. So we've got to remember that down here, this guy gets plus two attack for each clue in play. So he's actually now got four attack because he starts with a base attack of two. Now that means pretty much nothing to us because we've got 12 health and we can heal six. So we actually want more clues to come out. We want this guy to earn, you know, eight plus resources every turn now. Okay, so I've scryed twice. We've now got our clue so we can finish the game. Let's draw two cards. One, two. <laughs> False lead. The first player chooses and shuffles a card with the printed clue trait back into the encounter deck. That is the same one as we just discarded, but luckily, I have one resource and I use the tome to take our test of will out of the card. Ya blam. So we're going to cancel that. And this one, of course, gets shuffled back in because of Thalen. Okay, so we have quested successfully. And this says after the players quest successfully, the players may claim sign of Golem if it has nothing attached. This has something attached actually, so we can't claim it. But we have earned 13. So let's go one, two, three. This clicks here. This one is discarded. It is a bank to the Anduin, so it goes back on the top. And then we get another 30, another 10, which brings us to 15, which does beat this thing. So this gets beaten. But something pretty interesting happens here. I won't bother reading the whole thing. If there are ever no heroes with clue objectives attached in play, reset the quest deck back to 2B. So no one's got a clue. So this actually, we stay on 2P. We haven't beaten 2B. We just lose all our quest tokens. Okay, and we will travel down here. Meanwhile, this guy will attack. We will either get undefended. And we get four damage. One, two, three, four. Okay. Let's do a scry since I've been forgetting to do it the whole game. You don't really need it. It's a pretty benign quest. Oh, what a great time to scry. Reveal X additional cards from the encounter deck. Let's uh, send that to the bottom, shall we? Ya blammo. Because this guy's ability says, exhaust Denethor to look at the top card of the encounter deck. You may move that card to the bottom. You can actually do that every single turn. 
it's very, very powerful. But in this particular quest, not so much. It's, as you can see, it's pretty benign. Okay, we'll draw. We'll draw another card. Great, we get another test of will back. Let's tap you and go one, two. And I'm going to go one, two, and play out you. And I'm also going to go one and play out another Mathan. And let's just quest, 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 quest. And let's tap you and draw one more card and quest with you. Okay, Blamo, we're questing for 17. We do our scry, so we scry for two. We're gonna keep the clue. So this guy gets another two damage, still well within our health buckets range. Then he gets guarded. Oh, wow, we just drew two of these in a row. Discard one resource from each resource's hit pool. Oh, great, he's actually got two. That's lucky, one. And we've got resources to spare over this side. And that's instantly discarded. So this is actually not guarded, which is excellent. And we draw two cards for the actual quest. It's a crow, shuffle it back in from Thalen. And another crow, shuffle it back in from Phelan. If you're lucky, you can end up with like just crows at the bottom of the deck and just have them to not worry about anything. Phelan is actually super strong. Basically, in the future, crows have two damage, so this doesn't happen. But basically, if you're playing any of the Mirkwood cycle, and if any of the decks have the crows in them, put Thalen in your deck. It makes your life a million times easier. Okay, so we're plus 18, which is a huge amount. That clears the banks of the Anduin. It also clears the Ancient Man Mathan. Which means this guy gets to draw three cards. One, two, three. Three. And uh, that means this thing gets placed up here. So we're questing for some huge amount here, which is enough to beat this location. But remember, this one here actually was guarded by the bank. So when we calculated quest successfully, it was still guarded. So we're only able to take one of these, which we're going to stick over here on Aowen. Actually, let's give it to Frodo. Give him something to do. Frodo, it's more thematic for him to have it. So this one here is actually still in use, basically. It's still up there, but it's not uh, being taken. Now, there's a bit of an error with the mod. It can't understand these locations. So I'm actually going to place it up here for now. But before I do that, we're just going to clear this and go to the next one. But at the western edge of Mirkwood, the trail turned away. It wandered off southward and passed out of the Wood Elves' ken and was lost. Nice. Blip. Any player who does not control at least one clue cannot commit characters to the quest. That is fine. This deck is built, so only this person quests anyway. We only need one clue. If we ever don't have any clues, we reset the deck. So hopefully we'll be able to finish it this turn. This guy gets a card, we leave it undefended. There are two cards in play now. So he's six attack. Remove one progress in the current quest, there are no tokens. That's one, two, three for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Blamo and draw a card. And he draws another card because of Bilbo. Nice. We basically don't need to cast anything here. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and cast Gandalf Search. We didn't need to use this this game, but uh, that's fine. We're going to cast it over here. So that is one, two, three, four, Scourer's deck. 
And we get to put this in any order. So let's take this one. Actually, let's do it like this. Oh, we get to put one in our hand, don't we? We've got, yeah, okay. So let's take this one into our hand and yeah, we'll leave it like that. Return to top in any order. Yeah, blam, we'll put it in that order. Let's tap you. We draw that uh, guy. And then I'm going to cast this card. Move any number of resource tokens from a law, uh, from a, I always say law, but that is a leadership hero to any other resource pool on another hero. So you get bam, and we just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Actually, let's put, let's leave one. We'll make it ten. We're going to leave one up. Well, let's leave two. Yeah, let's leave two up just so we have access to both of these. So we're actually putting out nine and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Tap that and get another two. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now let's go cast both of these. So that is seven resources. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three to cast that, one to get it back, and then three to cast it again. So that's four and three for seven. And we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we'll go One, two, place out this guy. One, two, place out this guy. And that still leaves us some resources to cast Test of Will, or if we need, cancel a shadow. And then we're gonna go quest, 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 quest. This guy here gets plus two when he quests. Bamo. Now this person over here, we can't quest at all. So there's nothing we can quest for. And we're questing for a healthy 21. We don't do any scrying anymore, by the way. So let's just draw two cards. We get an, oh, there's all our things. Okay, so it works out like this. We scryed for two, and then we get to choose one to keep. So we go to keep one of these. This guy gets another two resources. I mean, <laughs> I say resources because they are, but he's now attacking for eight, which we can still quite comfortably take. Two, four, six, eight. We can actually take eight wounds without taking any damage because he's got 12 health. And now we draw, oh wait, no, hang on. I'm freaking confusing myself. So he's actually 10. which is getting a little more dangerous. Okay, so what's happening here is there's two, four, six. Why is he at 10? Have I been giving him too many resources? He should be eight now. Oh no, there's one over here. Yeah, two, four, six, eight. Yeah, sorry, I was confusing myself. Whew, I've actually done this quest about four times and I always miscalculate my resources, my, his attack power, which isn't a problem, except I'm using a Gloin engine. So it was making a huge difference because he was getting so many resources, whatever. So there's no scry. So both these cards came out, they both have guarded. So that guards the first one and this guards the next one. And this one here gets killed by Thalen. And this one here only damages people 35 or higher, so it also gets killed. Blam. Okay. <laughs> so there's actually nothing. We're questing for 23. 
requesting for 21, beg your pardon. So there's nothing really to do here. So I'm just going to go one, two, three and play out this guy just for fun. Adds two to every Rohan character. She is Rohan. So that is two. She is Rohan. So that's another two. She is also Rohan. That's another two. This dude is Rohan. That's another two. And this dude is Rohan. That's another two. And then I'll discard one and discard one. And that is another two. So we end up with a total of 33 quests. We quest successfully so we can claim all of these. One, two, and you can actually put multiple clues on the one character. And we beat it by 33 points. So that is minus eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's it. 25. We only need eight to pass. And that's that. That is the end of this quest. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. I've done this recording about 10 times and I always make some kind of miscalculation with how much damage this guy's getting. And in fact, let's just make it a perfect ending. We'll defend with this bloke. Flip this over. She is killed, sorry. And then we'll just go bam, bam, bam. In fact, let's just attack with one. We don't even need both of them to attack. Two damage and that kills this guy. And this is what I call a perfect ending. The, the My favorite endings for Lord of the Rings is when you've cleared the staging area, there's not even a location in here and the, all the monsters are dead. So this is a literal perfect run. It's a little slow, we were at turn eight because it took so long to dig out the clue. And that's that. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. Even if I made mistakes, I'm gonna upload it this time because I'm pressed for time. And I have literally done this about seven times because I keep miscalculating how much the how much the Mordor guy gets buffed. And we didn't really see any more Mordor guys. So we had one. We got two, only two came out, three, three came out, most of them in, in uh, Shadow Cards. And that's actually an interesting thing that a lot of people forget about this game is that you use the encounter deck as Shadow Cards. So if you can afford to keep a guy out, you're basically discarding cards from the encounter deck, which means that if... In, in this game, certain cards in the encounter deck are quite scary. You might play a quest where one card has a very high chance of ending the game. So if you can keep a mob around just to constantly, every turn, discard a shadow card, the chances of putting that into the staging area or into the discard pile grows with every person you can not kill. So if you're putting two into the discard pile and one into the staging area then you've got a much less chance of seeing that game ending card. And that's a great way to get around really nasty uh, treacheries and stuff, especially in the uh, in Khazad Doom that can just end your time. All right, that's the end of that. So let's get moving. Uh, over here, these are the decks. As yet, unnamed. So if you can think of a good name for these decks, then uh, just write it into the YouTube comments. Remember, what I like to do is have uh, a deck to have a like a global name. So we've got the Hunt for Golem quests, and then we'll have this deck here, and in it we'll have our double deck. So we want a name for this, and then we want a name for each of those decks, and then these will be added permanently to the mod for people to use later on. And that's that. I will see you guys next time.